wewe uko na sura shapeless ukilia machozi nenda kwa mgongo <laughs> i hope you didn't take offense because we'll be having a lot more of mchongwano on today's show if this is your stuff better get your pen and paper ready because you may need to borrow some ideas from us on other matters we attend the checker awards and find out what's been happening in the theater's front welcome to the show i'm your presenter eva minor Before we go to our first story, I would like to introduce our guest for today, a king. Prof, you're most welcome to Attitude. Thank you very much, Eva. <laughs> yes, so I just have to ask, the king of Mchongwano, yeah. is that what they call you or is that what you call yourself? That's what they call me because actually we have had so many competitions from Mchongwano and all through, all of them have been, been the winner all through. And mostly, I'm the one who writes most of these in Chonguanos that you see that move around. Uh, ah, great. That's why they gave me that name, uh -huh. the King of Mchonguano. Great, great. Yeah. So for those of us watching from home, what exactly is Mchonguano? Well, Mchonguano is comedy, yeah. Comedy that started way back since our, our parents' days, way back. And this, the easiest way I can say about Mchongwano is just, we call it the, the short form, the short Mchongwano. I mean the short comedy, as in because that's a one-liner thing, you know. You just say one word and then you finish it with a bomb, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Give us an example, please. Well, an example. When Mnono ukikali a novel in a short stories, simu yako imezeeka, Ikidunda chini ina mwaga credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Probably another example before we proceed. Okay. Nasikia wewe ni mchafu. Badila kuingizwa box, ulingizwa gunia. Too hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too funny, too funny. We'll come back to the king of Mchongwano in just a few. But before we do so, let's proceed to our first story. The Cheka Awards 2014 took place in Nairobi, an event that saw comedy lovers and over a hundred comedians come together. It was also an opportunity to take stock of the state of the industry. Here's a look. Having learned a great deal from the West, award ceremonies in Kenya have become synonymous with the red carpet and the glamour that goes with it. That was the case at the second Cheka Awards. Though the arrivals and the color could by itself make a whole show, the organizers spared some time for the main agenda of the day. <laughs> At an event bringing together hundreds of comedians, one couldn't expect humor to keep a safe distance. The awards had 25 categories with a total of over a hundred nominees. The comedy and theater industry have lost a few members in the last few weeks and in memory of these fallen heroes was this first category of awards. And I also want to call Jastorina's closest friend and relative, 
and former colleague working together, Mr. Hilary Mwangi, please come forward. After that, every category winner was announced. It would have become monotonous if it were not for the unique ways with which the winners received the news. Wonderful, wonderful. At the end of the show, we spared a few minutes to test the mood in the aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> Same chance of yeah. yes. Ubar, we are from far. We may unite very many communities, actually 42 communities. We may unite Pamoja only to do what we think is best for Kenya. Nasai, we are happy because very, very this is the greatest thing Sai may achieve so far. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Uh, started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, we here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your cash? What's your cash? What's your cash? What's your cash? I think the comedy has really grown. We've come from uh, the tribal comedy, now people do national comedy. Uh, we've come from mimicry comedy. People now are more creative. Uh, that's uh, this award. Do you remember that? This award has uh, over 23 categories. Yes. But I even believe and hope that next year we can even expand it to more categories because uh, people are coming with new uh, creativity, eh? new genres of comedy every single day. Whoa, the house was just full of comedians. And the king was also there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the role of Mchongwano uh, in comedy, especially here in Kenya as a whole? Yeah, like, you know we have stand-up comedy, and stand-up comedy that Kenyans more actually like doing, mm -hmm. they must include Mchongwano inside that. So, that's kind of Mchongwano, but in a story kind of way, mm -hmm. you know. That's actually Mchongwano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Amazing, amazing. And uh, Mchongwano, the, the language in which it is uh, yeah. said, yeah. must it always be Kiswahili or is, are there other languages that are involved? Well, Mchongwano, it's in vernacular, there is in English. Like in English, you know, my mama, your mama. You remember that? Ah, yeah, your mama, my mama jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there is Mchongwano yeah. in Kiswahili. Then there is um, some in Kiswahili Sanifu, mm -hmm. you know, like in course they call it Kugoana, they don't call it Mchongoano. Mm -hmm. And then the Kikuyus do have theirs, mm -hmm. and then the Luos also have theirs. Mm -hmm. they, and it can go all around, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, great. So, speaking of the, uh, like for example, you're hearing uh, someone else, some other Mchongoano artist, yeah, yeah. Uh, say something on TV, uh, and you think, oh, wait, that's my idea. Mm. Have you ever come across uh, such a situation? And Ver what do you think about it? Very many. Mm. There are very many. Like most of these Mchongwanos you see here most, mm. I usually write them on, on my page on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. So most of them, they steal it. I'm not sure they steal from there. Mm. So may I just get to listen to them on the streets. Mm. And some I do get from kids, you yes. know, because kids actually do love that a lot, you know. Mm. So me, actually, I don't feel very much offended, but maybe I'll just, I'll feel a ka pinch kidogo too, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. I'll feel if it's something of mine is spreading. Uh -huh. no, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute, that's my art. That's my art. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, most of Chongwano, you'll find it in a particular side of town. Does it say the story of a particular uh, estate or a particular group? What exactly does it, which voice does it, which collective voice does it all have? They have, they are very many, there are two different types of Mchongwanos there. Mchongwanos you can, you can have on pubs, mm. there are Mchongwanos you can use on kids, mm. there are Mchongwanos you can use on grown-ups, mm. there are corporate Mchongwanos, you know, <laughs> digital Mchongwanos, you know. So, yeah, Mchongwanos, it's, you know, it's all around. Mm. Give, give us an it's example of a corporate mchongwano corporate or digital mchongwano. Digital mchongwano. <laughs> yeah. It's like computer yako ni mze. Mm -hmm. Baka recycle bin yake yiko na machokora. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Something like TV enyu yiko na mashimo, yiko na mashimo mingi juu. Mm -hmm. Baka advertisement ya royko, nyinyu usikia garufu. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as as the king of Mchongwano, how long have you been in this art? When did this, it all begin? The art started actually while I was still young in primary school. I never, even if you see, I just grew up juicy too. Oh. Mm -hmm. You really at least got us some body, you know. Yeah. I used to be have a small body, so most of the time I used to be beaten because I used to talk a lot. Mm. That's when I used to use Mchongwano because if you hit me, I just Chongwa you. Mm. And then you hit me again, I'll Chongwa you, and then people just laugh at you. Mm. So it started way back while I was still young. So actually, I didn't take it, take it that serious by that time. Then the first time I went on stage, I saw how people were laughing and cheering to it, I felt so good. Mm. Yeah. What is the future of Mchongwano in Kenya? What actually I see about Mchongwano that's going to be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Like I've done music with Mchongwano. Now I see poem coming with Mchongwano. Mm -hmm. I see stories coming with Mchongwano. Let's say something like that. And then whatever the kids will start in the future, but will be still be in Mchongwano. But Chongwano is just something that will never fade. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take a short break, don't go too far. And when we come back, we'll give you tips on how to express yourself in a living space. And we'll be all about butterflies. Welcome back to the show. In theater speak, a classic is a script or a performance that refuses to be buried deep in the past. In trying to understand why some works of art become immortal, we watch the play Butterflies Are Free at the Phoenix Theatre. Here is a review. The longer you stay, the harder it will be for him when you leave. Butterflies Are Free is a script written in 1969 by Leonard Gosher and made popular through a series of shows at the Broadway Theater in New York City. This always happens on a Saturday. Oh, this is my first time on a Saturday. For the last couple of weeks, theater lovers have been flocking the Phoenix Theater where the play has been showing. With Lenana Kariba as Don Gatia, Frida Muhindi as Jill Musuve, Melissa Kiplagat as Florence Ngatia, and Tim Kingo as Harry Ebale, the romantic comedy centers on a young man's attempt at self-reliance and independence, a young woman's fear of commitment, and a loving mother's struggle with letting her son go. The first action that takes place in this play is a phone call with his mom. And from that conversation, you can already tell that she's nagging and she's always pressing and she's always in his case. Then we have mom approving, disapproving. You can hurt him. The longer you stay, the harder it will be for him when you leave. We have the fractured relationship with the parent that, again, they reunite in the end and they love each other. And she realizes that he needs his space. She, she can't smother him with love. And uh, he's normal. Let him also have his wants and his desires and things. Butterflies Are Free, the play, won several awards and nominations when it was first shown in 1969 in the U.S., a feat that culminated into the production of a film by the same name in 1972. I think you have a lot more... It wasn't surprising that the film went ahead to win several awards, including an Academy Award and a Golden Globe Award. I knew the day you met me, I could love you. For a play that has been shown thousands of times around the world, the director of this particular show deliberately gave it a strong Kenyan appeal in a number of ways. That's why you have references to the Machakos governor, deputy governor, to two places that we've been to, uh, villages band. If you, if you listen to, to, to the music, if you... There's a very deliberate attempt to have our own music. People tend to think of our music as music for the club, you know, and, and that's all. We, we don't see it as cause in, in movies and what. People, not very many people see it in that way. Oh, and the eulogy. Oh, the eulogy. <laughs> I want the eulogy to be read by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and if they can't find Morgan Freeman, I want them to get Jeff Quinn. 
Even in the midst of the humor, the theme of disability and the need to give equal opportunities to people living with disabilities still rings loud and clear. <laughs> Mostly we are used to hearing sob stories about people with, um, with disabilities, people who are challenged in one way or the other. And uh, they keep, we, we, we keep hearing that it's not, uh, it does not in any way hinder them. But we still only hear sad stories. What's this thing? What? This thing on uh, stilts. Oh, it's my bed. Your bed? Yeah. Wow, this is wild. <laughs> you like it? Oh my gosh, I love it. It is the best bed I've ever seen. Oh, and I've seen a lot of beds. <laughs> This is my first play I've done that actively deals with a unique concept of blindness. I have a friend who's blind, so this felt like a very like a very close story to tell. For those who watched and loved Ray, the 2004 award-winning movie that celebrates the life of Ray Charles, this play will surely set you on a highway to destination nostalgia. I've never done anything close to this before. Playing not even the fact that he was blind, but even the character himself, how he tries to be so independent and stuff like that. And I think that's why I liked it the best. I think it's very relatable, especially for women. We always have this nurturing thing about us. So um, it was very relatable for me. almost 40 years old and still makes so much sense in the contemporary society. Now that's the true mark of immortality. Moving on, ever wondered what art with a little bit of creativity can do to your living space? Take the next few minutes to reevaluate your living room. Interior design is something very interesting and uh, very good because it's just like fashion design. You know where you have fashions coming in and out every so often? It's just like entertainment where you want to please people. Interior designers are supposed to please people. So they are supposed to be perfect. First of all, um, an interior designer, you must be born an interior designer. By this I mean God gives us gifts that you don't pay for. That is something I've always desired to be. Whenever there's an interior design course, the L designs and everywhere, I've been attending. And then I read widely. I really like to read. And then the interior design um, gift that I have, I tried it with my house. Interior design is very wide. We were taught to start interior design from the ceiling to the wall to the floor. I tell my clients, and when I speak to people about interior design, if somebody comes to your house and you open the door and they don't say, wow, I tell them, look for me. It's supposed to be a piece of art. It's supposed to be a creativity, but it all depends on the client and what she wants or he wants. When you come into a room, what do you do? what do you see first? Most people say you see the wall. And when you see the wall, you want to see what is on the on the put here. So first, if you if it is an empty room, you have to start working on the ceiling and working on the walls and working on the floor. And then now you can start furnishing the room. So after you furnish the room, whatever you did on the ceiling and you did on the wall and did on the floor, we will now give you control what you're going to put in the rest of the rooms, what kind of curtains you're going to have, what kind of seats you're going to have, what kind of uh, 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 carpets you're going to have, what kind of uh, uh, stools you're going to have, and every other decor that you want to put in the house is guided by your walls, your ceiling, and your floor. So the ceiling must have a color that reflects to the, to the, to the living room, or yeah, to the area that you want to light. So there must be a light there, and the light that you're going to put there must be a light that is attractive. People put chandaria, others put tube lights. It depends on what the room is all about. If you like oomph, you can have some, you know, some nice things like I have in my house. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you like, if you don't like a lot of light, you can dim them. We have, we have dimmers. You can have other colors like this lampshades. We have all colors. Mm -hmm. A bare wall, there's so much you can do with it. You can either put wallpaper. You can do something we call wall master. And just all this is creativity. You must be a very creative person. You can paint it. Straight painting, I leave it like that. Or you can even contrast paints. You can also make it wooden. You can even put plywood. 
You can even paint it a color that looks like wooden. Interior design is very interesting. We have clients even in the slums. You go to their house and when you're inside their house, you can't believe that you're in a slum. The place is converted so well and that's why I say it is not where you live, it is how you live. Make your living so comfortable wherever it is. But I recommend uh, um, a water carpet a lot in the sitting rooms, depending on where you live. Because also, you have to take care of the exterior, whatever is happening outside. A, a carpet, which is what wall in a sitting room, is very good because it, it, it makes the room warm. And you don't even need to wear your shoes. You can be able to walk around without any, without any problem. You have a wall to wall carpet, and then you can throw in your rugs everywhere. If not so, you can have, we have very nice tiles today. Different kinds of tiles, textures, and you can match it with your wall, with your with your with your furniture and with everything that is around you and the color also must also match the rest of the house you don't go and put another color from somewhere and come and mess up your decor fathom in your mind the floor is gray you have a gray carpet on the floor right you have nice gray dark gray seats and then you have a pink wall and then you have a curtain that has got some little pink some little gray and a lot of white and then the sheer is white and then on your, on your sofas, you can now throw in those nice throw cushions that have got the three colors. The white, the pink, and the gray. That is lovely. My number one principle of decorating the, re the living room is the person who, you know, my client, understanding my client. I cannot do it my way. I will always want to hear what you want, and I perfect it for you. Indeed. Curtains are not just curtains to be put where they're supposed to be. It's about the entire art of the entire living space. Unfortunately, it's a wrap from us here. And I've learned a lot from this episode. I mean, from the Cheka words to Mchongwano, which I'm thinking might be in our dictionary or Kamusi in the coming few years. Let's do this again next week, same time, same channel. Please do keep your thoughts, questions, suggestions flowing to the numbers on your screen, beginning with the words attitude. From myself and the entire Attitude crew, it's goodbye. <laughs>